My worst breakup left me feeling completely alone. I don't know if I'm still with this person that I really love or like starting this new chapter of my life. I've convinced myself that no one else knows this pain that I'm feeling right now. Everything's framed around the next time you'll see them. It's a black hole of negative thoughts that, that you're just stuck in. All right, so breakups really suck. The aftermath of a breakup is tough. We sob, we go out too much, we don't go out at all, we obsess over our ex and generally freak out. So why do we feel brokenhearted, even after breaking up with someone we could barely stand? The answer can be boiled down to biology. The brain is the organ of mind. And when we're heartbroken, we feel as if we've lost our mind. We wanted to get a handle on this and look inside. To study how our brains work during a breakup, Dr. Brown and the anthropologist Helen Fisher put people who had just been romantically rejected into an MRI machine and showed them two pictures. The first one was a photo of a platonic friend, and the second was a picture of the ex who had just dumped them. Then they compared the results. Probably the most important thing that we found is that many brain areas were active. They're active when people are withdrawing from cocaine. This is like a drug addiction. The ventral tegmental area is in the stem of the brain. It controls nonverbal basic needs like heart rate and breathing, but it also processes pleasure and reward, including the act of falling in love. When your relationship ends, this part of your brain is still unconsciously in love with your ex-partner. When we look at the picture of the person, it's pain, but the main thing is we're still in love with them. That's really at a nonverbal level of the brain. No wonder it's so hard to control. Fisher and Brown also found that the insular cortex, which processes the anxiety we feel when we go through physical pain, became active when participants looked at photos of their exes. You know when someone says their heart aches? They're actually experiencing a literal heartache. You know when you can't stop analyzing every part of your relationship after a breakup? That's because the nucleus accumbens, which unconsciously processes gains and losses, and your conscious reasoning cortex work together to figure out what went wrong in your relationship. There's an over, an overactivity in this part of the brain that's that's thinking about what happened, what could happen in the future. But while your unconscious brain is mourning the end of your relationship, your ventrolateral prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain that processes emotional reassessment, is already imagining life without your ex. Think of it this way. You see two cars that are maybe going to collide in a movie and you say, oh, something very bad's gonna happen. And then the movie stops and, and you try to say, maybe they won't collide. And then you imagine that they turn just at the right moment. And that's how you come to terms with the loss of your ex. You think, maybe I'll be okay after all. Maybe it's not the disaster I thought it was going to be. But here's the thing. If love is a drug and we're programmed to spiral deeper into addiction after a breakup, can science help us get over heartache faster? When anyone puts a timestamp mm -hmm. on a loss, it's such a disservice to that person. It has to do with what your personal experiences were growing up, what your family was like, and therefore there can't be one formula. There's no magic formula to get over a breakup, but Dr. Lockman says that there are some things you can do to make your post-breakup existence a little easier. First, have a designated driver for your life post-breakup. Dr. Lockman says you'll need a trusted friend to prevent you from making bad decisions, like getting a tattoo of your ex's name in an effort to win them back. Secondly, if you do slip up and text your ex, don't be too hard on yourself. Work on knowing that that was one slip and it doesn't dictate how the rest of your life and how the rest of your pattern is gonna go. Thirdly, if you can't handle your feelings, don't keep it to yourself. Talk to anyone who's willing to listen. When you're calling somebody up and looking for something, what you're really, really needing is just a place to put it. No matter what anyone says, it takes as long as it takes one step at a time. While science can explain those strong urges to text your ex, there's unfortunately no way to train your brain to actually stop them. But it's good to know that even if it feels like the pain will never end, all you really need to get over that jerk who broke your heart is time. I don't know what I will ultimately learn from my last breakup. I don't feel like I'm not gonna move on or that I, you know, lost the only person for me. It took a really long time. It took longer than I thought. But I, I hope it's something good. I hope it's beneficial to me and for her, uh, and I think it will be.